Uh, hello everyone and you are of course all very welcome to our coverage of the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup racing from Val de Sole Trentino in Italy. One of the homes of mountain bike racing in Europe. Been coming here since 2008 and this little corner of Italy has never disappointed. My name's Rick McLaughlin, joining me in the commentary booth today, the first ever Olympic champion, Bart Brenchens. Bart, on the 23 men's, about to go. Yeah, always a nice category to watch. Always completely unpredictable, keeps us on our toes in yep. the booth. 21 degrees Celsius out there at the minute. There are a few clouds rolling around the Val de Sole, but we'll keep you abreast of what goes on with them as the riders start taking to the front row of the grid. Vittone then for Italy. Big day for him racing at home. Luke Vidman, Thomas Max in Swiss racing. One of the big, big talents from a big, big nation in terms of mountain bike racing. Joe Blackmore from the UK. Front row start after a good short track race. Young man making good on a lot of promise. Dario Lilo with the ice vest on. It's the overall points leader's jersey. Puff of the cheeks. Lilo getting ready for this one. Fifth in the short track earlier in the weekend. This young man, Riley Amos, get the feeling he really is yet to show us uh, the very best of what he can deliver in 2023. Will it be today? Adrian Boishy then, third place in the short track the other night. And a rider whose name is on the tip of the tongues of many cross-country race fans around the world. Boishy, such an exciting talent. This man, Luca Martin, national champion of France. Second place in that short track race and someone that this course should suit today. Two minutes to go until they're on their starter's orders. It's warm in Val de Sole. This man, though, Carter Woods turned up the heat. Took that first short track win of the season. Some serious firepower on this front row bar. And this is the beauty of men's under 23 racing, isn't it? Anything and it probably anything could and probably will happen. Yeah, it uh, definitely will. Here we see the start list again. Woods, Martin, Boishy, Amos, Lilo, Blackmore, Vidman, Vittone, Rechtal, Rose. That's, yeah, Ula Rechtal, that's the first rider of the second row. Tom Schellikens from Holland as well. What can he do today? Also second row start for him. Is that Lukel from the Czech Republic? Strong in the first half and Leah Gang. Bjorn Riley, Trek Future Racing. Big star in the making there. Luke Moyer, the South African as well. Yeah, the depth of this uh, category, it's huge. A lot of riders, they can win. Hard to predict a winner in this category. And we see almost every time again, new winners. Now uh, Lilo showed his strength in the last few rounds. Yeah, Lilo in that red and white points leader's jersey in the blue shorts to the left-hand side of your screen. On the number one bike, fast starter. Carter Woods, the Canadian, plenty of horsepower in the middle of it as well. Is that Luco stretching the neck out? One start loop plus five laps. So they're on their starter's orders now. The red lights will turn green, and once they turn green, Hugo Martin just adjusting something. And they are on their way in Val de Sole, Trentino there. Martin Strong start, Riley Amos in the blue track factory racing on the number 14. Leads the way beside him, Vittoni for Italy. Boishy just getting shuffled back on the right-hand side. So Luca Martin is leading. Really, Amos, good start of him next to him. Massive field of racers here in the under 23 men's race as well. Huge field. And it's on high speed immediately. 
Yeah, tempo always going to be high at the start of this one, and so it has proven to be. Adrian Brasi now is leading. Now we see that the field is already stretched out immediately after a few turns. Yeah, elbows out racing here at the start of the under 23 men's World Cross Country Olympic World Cup. And where the riders are right now, that's also the original course where they come back uh, later. It's Kwashi from Martin from Amos. And also uh, a good start for Alexander Hudima, his nickname Sasha. Sasha Hudima then from the Ukraine, riding for KMC. On his way to the front of this one. Look how many riders there oh, are. Bart. So many Stack riders, field. so many different nationalities. Yeah, and that's uh, 100, 119 on the start list this morning. And especially here uh, on this part uh, of the course where they are right now with these uh, switchbacks, these hairpins. It's not that easy to ride next to each other. And it's uh, immediately steep up, so it will be definitely a bottleneck for a couple of these riders more back in the field. And it will be in a, they try to be in a good position. And there you can see it, it, it will be uh, running for some of these riders, especially in the first lap. Yeah, Adrian Brashi now in the lead. Brashi. Followed by the national champion from France, Luca Martin with the number 15 on his bike. That's not, that's not uh, Alex Malacane. No, that's, that's not on, Alex. Uh, no. Yeah, you can ignore that's that graphic. Brazilian rider. I'm sure Alex Malacane wishes it was Alex Malacane, but that graphic just might be wrong there. It's Adrian Boisci at the front of this one. You can see they're all off and running. The traffic jam yeah. has started. Always a problem in cross-country racing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there are so many, you have so many riders, uh, and only just a few can uh, be chaos. riding next to each other. And here we are already a crash that we saw also in the 23 women's uh, race earlier today. And also here in the man again. It seems really, to me it's very bumpy just after the start. Uh, really choppy surface, isn't it? And that can just bobble riders into one another and they go down like a deck of cards. A couple of line choices here now as they head towards the top of the start loop climb. Boisci to the right hand side of Martin in the French national champions jersey. Yeah, and these riders they know as well if they are entering that uh, first descent, they have to be in the right position. It will be stretched out immediately, so that's why they are battling all the time also on this part of the course. It's Luca Martin, who's uh, the French national champs, Joseph. Yeah, easy to recognize. Shellikins as well with him. John Rayleigh, the US champ. All these riders are sprinting. Adrian Boashi at the front there and ahead of Luca Martin. Shellikins on the sex bike, left hand side of your screen. Yeah, Alex Malakar actually with the number 12 on his bike. Uh, he had a good start too, he's around 10th position. Shellikins. Washi, Martin, Lilo, Amos, Vittone, Hudima, Malakarni in eighth. Lille Lund. Ekdal in the lime jersey from Norway coming down. And here you see how uh, it is to cameras <laughs> position it on your, ammo, on your seat post. Barroso Gomez with the onboard camera showing you how much that back wheel is working on these full suspension bikes. Carter Woods is scrubbing a little bit of speed off in the black corner there. Even if the suspension is uh, full open, the mode, uh, the lever of the suspension full open, it shows uh, how bumpy yeah. these courses are. And the speed the under 23 men push on at, it's really comparable actually to the elite times as well, isn't it? That's Tom Skellikas who's pushing hard with number six on his bike. Marte behind him, Adrian Brashi, Mario Lilo, he's leading the, the leader's jersey. Yep, Shellikins, he impressed us in Lea Gang. Carter Woods just leading that little uh, group behind him. Carter Woods, the big Canadian who took the win in the cross country short track race earlier in the weekend. Yeah, he was very strong last Thursday, it was. Thursday evening in short track racing. Really suited on that track, didn't it? Yeah, very powerful rider. We have uh, Dario Lilo. Yeah, the leader. 
Overall points leader taken to the front of the race now, the Swiss rider. Fascinating duel last time out between him and Adrian Boishy, and Boishy just absolutely detonated on the last lap, and Lilo had no answer for him. Alex Malakana with the number 12 on his bike, also for riding for the Trinity team. Tim Freudler, the next team. For the first time here on the first loop, very steep, the gravel road up, the speed really, is high. Really difficult to get any traction, any purchase on that loose, loose ground, but... With a very aggressive style of riding of these guys. That speed's high, definitely, through that tech zone then, so riders can get technical assistance there, although they will not be able to get a bottle or feed. Shellikens at the front. Yep, Tom Shellikens, he is on a mission today. But Back on the full suspension bike, we saw him on the hardtail and the Gang. Yeah, for well, Gang it's an option to ride the hardtail bike, but here in the Val Sole, absolutely it's not. Here is uh, Sasha Hudima, yeah. number 11 on this back. And sometimes in these little technical climbs part, a full suspension bike can, can actually help as well, can't you? can get a bit of grip out of it. This, yeah, most of the time even they have it uh, like, a, you have like a trail mode, that's uh, the middle position of your lever, so it is, it's, it's an open, uh, it opens the suspension, and that's how riders probably riding also on the climbs here on the course like this, when it's so uh, technical, so bumpy. And of course, the setup of the suspension, the setup, the, 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 the tire pressure, these little things, they are so important uh, for a good setup of your bike. And riders and also the mechanics, they're working really hard for that in the last few days, just before the start of the race. Yeah, more so than ever in cross-country racing, really the spotlight is on bike setup because the speeds are so high now. Every yeah. little tenth of a yeah. second counts, and yeah. bike is. setup can be key. Carter Woods now on that number three, the Giant Factory racing. Yeah, and a bike setup is also a very personal thing uh, for Ole Rekdal from Norway. There's Bjorn Riley in the national champion's jersey off the USA. It's a good, it's a good national champs jersey that yeah, yeah. one, isn't it? <laughs> stars it's always and stars and stripes. It's pretty cool looking. But yeah, yeah. Everyone likes it. But also the leader's jersey of uh, Dario Lilo, the number one on his back, taking a different line. Yeah, that's the one that matters. The Canadian one uh, looks actually good too. Yeah. Carter Woods. I'm into that. Yeah, Carter Woods. Festooned in maple leaves. Yeah. That's the national champion of Canada. That's the final. Uh, Race of the year. Yeah. Mont Saint Dan, Canada. Mont Saint Dan, what a cross country course. The beginning we have of October. There. It oh. is. I still have nightmares about having to go around there. I'm wondering what kind of uh, weather we will have uh, that time of the year. Well, there's, Canada. A, there's an old saying in mountain bike racing only one thing is guaranteed it will rain in Mont Saint Dan. And it's slippery. And it's slippery. And very technical. La Beatrice. Oh, La Beatrice. The famous descent there. It is. Massive boulders, and it takes no prisoners, suffers no fools. But this course is also very demanding. Tom Skellig is leading. Look at him hey, jumping down that little gap now, at the hey, front of the race. Yeah, yeah. The Dutch guy. Andreas Fittone, here he is, KTM of Italy. I think he's the first Italian rider. Jellicans, let's got see me. what these riders can do here on this most, probably most difficult part of the course. It's really tricky that. You've yeah, got different just... lines riders can use and they carry on a lot of speed, so it looks like they don't have any problems with it. That inside line is quicker, but you've got to be so precise with it. You've got to be over to exactly the right line to make sure that it counts. And luckily it's dry. Boots, here he is, the Canadian rider. From the film Sashodima in the lime jersey from the uh, Ukraine. But Tom Skellikas is leading. Look at Martin behind him. Adrian Brashi, Mario Lilo. And we have Rayleigh Amos from the USA. Andreas Fitone also, good, good start so far. Here he is with the number nine on his bike. Lidlund behind him. Skellikens is pushing hard. Skellikens pushing Looking hard. Looking good. Yeah. Luca Martin, we really have to yet to see him shine this season. It feels like today might be his day. Yeah, he's always fast in the beginning of the race. Yeah, he just drops off very strong in short track racing, but let's see if he can make it to a good end today. 
Same would apply to Riley Amos, actually, as well. We've seen him at the front of races, but then either suffer a mechanical or fail to shine, really. It'd be good to see him. I was impressed how these riders can be riding that close together on such a technical course. I mean, it's tough. It's tough. It's very easy in mountain biking to have the same crash as the, per the person in front of you. You know, somebody just gets the wrong line and yeah, you're riding their bike and not your own. And you can bump into them. Here we're on the hardest climb of the course. Very steep, very long in that first loop. Brings the riders to the highest point of the course. Look at Matej, here he's leading. Yeah, Lilo just moving across in front of Amos there. Yeah, and let's see which line riders will take if they are entering that highest point. Amos hammering up that climb now into third place for Trek Factory Racing on the number 14 bike. Oh, Luca Martin is feeling strong. Luca Martin looking good in the French National Champions jersey ahead of Adrian Boisci. Oh. Boisci going for the A line. Oh, just having the trial. No, no, that's not worked at all for Boisci. He saw it at the top of it. He kind of had the trials his way into it, and then the front yeah, end went on him. Actually, he, he did it quite okay. <laughs> yeah, he managed to get away with it. I thought that we were going to see a big tumble there, but Boisci got away with that one by the skin of his teeth. These guys are so skilled. Exactly. Well, so that good. has given Luca Martin a chance to just disappear up the road a bit. A few seconds for him. Winding these drills very fast. He is really Amos in the second place. And now we have Adrian Brashi. And here we see that again. Here we go. Just, let's have a look at what happened to Brashi there. Yeah, that. Just the bike straightened up. It's so loose. You that have corner to break now. very hard, actually, if you are. Up yeah, if, if, the, if you have done the drop, and there's not that much space, actually. Do you know what, Bart? He recovered, uh, he, he recovered well from yeah, that, Yeah, he actually. did, yeah, he did. And then you see also how loose it is there, just in front of that big tree. I wonder if that A-line is just too blowing now. That looks so soft and duffy that it might the, actually the, the be... Ground, the ground is too soft, it, it doesn't stick together anymore. No. So every time rattles are coming there, breaking, then it, it's get worse and worse. It's your worst nightmare on a mountain bike whenever you arrive already heavily on the brakes into something really, really loose because you lose control. But one man not losing control at the front of this one, Luca Martin is yep. tapping away at the front of it. Riley Amos giving chase and he's bringing Adrian Boisci with him. And you have Dario of him. Dario Lilo, fourth place he is. Dario Lilo. We want to bring these two in front of him back yeah. into touch. After the descent, the gaps are there. Oh, the pace is high at the front. Yeah, the pace is the very high. Okay, okay, it's pushing hard here. Back over his shoulder. Two more riders coming. And a small gap to Dario Lilo. Yeah, very, very early in the race. Very fast. Martin, Boisci and Amos together again at the front, then they're going to go up this extremely, extremely steep climb up to the right-hand side of your shot there. Yeah, and the riders still feel that in their legs after pushing hard on the flat bottom, and suddenly the, the climb starts very steep. Seven seconds for Dario Lilo. Scalicus. Yeah, it looks like Lilo will make it across to these three. Yeah, the yeah, he knows that he has to do it. He, he will, he will so do it. High. Yeah, Luca Martin, he's pushing really hard in the beginning of this race. Another French guy behind him. Chalikins in fifth currently. There he is in shot now. Yeah, the Woods. Tobias Lillelund. Denmark, Another fast Dane. Yep. We saw an extremely fast Danish rider do the business. And the under 23 women's race earlier on today. Can Leland now get himself to the front of this one? Double up for Denmark, but. Frank Future Racing is riding. Tobias Lillelund. Rektal. Norway in the line jersey. Rektal's having a good season, Bart. Yeah, strong in uh, short track racing. Also in cross country, he's getting better and better every time. He's ahead of this climb now, and still got Martin out in front. Do you think Boisci will be happy to let him do some work? I think so, yeah. I think now with this pace, it's very high. Uh, Luca Martin is pushing. I'm wondering if he can make it to 
for the rest of the race, but it seems to be uh, he's feeling strong. He's doing all the work. Now, Udilo was not able to close that gap that quick. No, Six seconds. Just one of those last shots. I thought the pace was there that he'd, he'd be quickly back across to it, but seems to have stalled a little bit, Lilo, in his attempts to get back over. Six seconds the gap. Let's keep an eye on that one. The chasing group led by Shellikins, 14 seconds back now for Marta. Yeah, I mean, the gaps stay like more of the same. Yeah, Arthur Woods is in that chasing group too, and Tobias Lindelund. Yeah, they've stabilized the wee bit, haven't they? As you can see here also, look at Martin, he's the guy who's pushing. Really, Amos on the back. That uh, descent yeah. brings the riders back to the finish line. Into this super fast rock line descent. Jump on board the drone now, and you'll see this really chattery rock section coming up. Yes, yeah, yeah. Half of it is new, oh. newly built. Marta, they made jumping it a bit wider. It's crazy. <laughs> fast part. Yeah. Really, yeah. really fast. How quickly did it go down there? Lilo threw it safely. Yeah, Lilo almost back to the leaders. And that bridge is new too. Yeah. And then the first one, and then there's another bridge. This is the second one. And then once you come off this one, you really are on that slower going, choppier ground. You see the seat just popping up from Boishe. He uses that dropper post to get back into the saddle. Takes uh, yep. a gel by the look yep, of it. Taking a gel. Look at Martel already. After uh, one and a half lap they have done. And it gives these riders the opportunity to come back again. Lilo. Carter Woods, Canadian champion. Into the tech feed zone for Rayleigh Amos. And actually, only the tech feed zone, that lane where they are in right now. Yep. They can uh, have the technical assistance or like the feeding. Boishe Lane, leading Martin across the line, Carter Woods cooling down, so it is getting warm out there. So it's uh, Tom Skellicus who wasn't uh, into that uh, tech feed zone, so he's not able to took everything. Temper anything. Temperatures today predicted to be around 25 degrees Celsius, it has dropped a little bit from this morning. It's cloudy at now again, uh, some yeah, open blue sections, but mostly cloudy, so... It can, might, uh, it can swing so wildly and weller here, though. Yeah, but the sun is out, it's warm immediately. So hot, yeah. yeah. So hot, yeah. 25 degrees to expect, and that's warm and it can, these guys. The tracks here in Val de Sole, Trentino, they can move back and forward with grip, depending on what the weather is doing. As we saw on the downhill yesterday, we were treated to two absolutely belting races in the elite women, elite men's race. Check out the highlights for those when you can. But we saw the rain arrive during the elite men's race, which you know kind of just made the track really, really difficult going. And then all of a sudden, it stopped raining, it baked for 10 minutes or so, and it was perfect. And time started talking the final race and at its best. And unpredictable Lilo is with Carter Woods now trying to get on the back of yeah, this lead group. Not able to close that gap. Will they know that Lilo's back there, Bart? Will they know that he's a danger man and they need to keep pushing on? Yeah, I think so. So they, uh, they, they're really pushing hard, these three. They know that Dario Lilo uh, has been in a good shape. Uh, it has been uh, two weeks ago since uh, Leo Gang, but anyway, uh, they know as well that's a dangerous man. And also, he's having the leader's jersey, so they're all working hard for their points. The overall standings. What will that performance last time out from Boashi do for his confidence though against Lilo? Because he attacked early on that climb and he made it stick. And it was a real it was the first real bit of weakness we'd seen from Lilo this season. It was, yeah. I think Dario Lilo he did uh, a stage race on the road, which makes him a, a lot stronger. Also where uh, his uh, hometown race in uh, Landshead, of course. He's living in um, Davo, not far from that. That, that motivates him, of course, as well. And it looks like that the form is a little bit uh, off at the moment, so not that strong anymore as he was uh, some weeks ago. But yeah, these guys, they will take the opportunity for to take a World Cup win. Adrian Boisy, he's a very high, talented rider. Adrian Boisy in that distinctive kit of Trinity Racing. Bikes and kit always absolutely on point for Trinity. Lilo now 17 seconds back, so they've Gone backwards by five seconds slightly. Carter Woods is with him. Carter Woods, a rider we've seen a lot this season. He's 
he's comfortable to sit in a group and just let the group move around him yeah. and sort of head forwards when it wants to head forwards. And oh, Tobias Lidlund now is taking the lead here of the chasing group with number 19 on his back. Tom Skellig is behind him. Jorn O'Reilly with the number seven. And then uh, Gui. What is Gui? Adrian Boisci still in the lead of this race at the minute, the Frenchman. Yep, the two French guys are looking strong on the number two bike. Behind them, the Orbea of Luca Martin. They'll know each other well from racing in France. Yeah, France always delivers strong cross country riders. Yeah, absolutely. Just Jordan Theroux in elite category. We go back to the days of uh, Julian Absalon, and yep. they really. They really had a talisman there for a long time, France, that really inspired a big a glut of uh, young racers. Yeah, and, uh, Tito Acaro, he won here last year, cross country race. Well, actually, he won the double, he won also a short track last uh, year here in uh, Val di Sole. Yeah, Caro, we haven't seen the best one this year, suffered a wee bit with illness and a few niggling injuries. Yeah, not his best season so far, it's true. No, he came into the year really as one of the names we were talking about, but. To say, Let's not see not. how smooth these the guys taking this uh, technical part of the course. Carter Woods. He's coming. Also for him, no problems at all. And that is the thing here, it's just Val de Sole. Yeah, it's so mean? awkward the whole way around, isn't it? It is so demanding this course. Dari Lilo, a little bit more problems over here, taking a different line. Tobias Lillelund from Denmark, also no problems for him. And here is Tom Skellikus. From the Netherlands. Tom Schalik is big, big talent, Bart. He is, yep. Matis Gui, also another French guy. Strong. Wow, oh, small Carl mistake. Woods. And that is what we're talking about. It's just so hard to get the power down on this really, really loose terrain. Yeah, it's very soft over there, very dusty. And it's also, I mean, not that good rolling, this, this ground. It's it's really lumpy, isn't yeah. it? Really it's just, just awkward and not awkward, that enjoyable. Yeah. Marcus Guid in the black jersey, KTM rider, the number 20 on his bike. Looking strong, moving forwards. Seventh place. Technically a very strong rider too. Back to the leaders. These three. Close together. They are. Still Boashi at the front doing a, doing a lot of work early in this race, Adrian Boashi. But as I say, arrives here riding on a wave of confidence, having uh, beaten Dario Lilo in Leogang on a really, really tough climbers course. Boashi was third in the short track earlier in the weekend by just two seconds, so was right in it up until the death. Really riding into some. Absolutely sensational for me, Adrian Boashi, but we can see Martin now take it, take it the front. Yeah, he likes to write his own line. He's coming to the front again. Maybe he's feeling a bit stronger in the descent, so that's why he likes to be in the first place, first position. Riley Amos for the USA, a huge, huge talent, and somebody we've seen him have mechanicals earlier in the season he blew that tire off the rim and yeah, yeah. he just uh, I think it's someone who just he gets caught up in the race and pushes past the so mechanical limits all these three now taking the uh, outside line the B line I think that's the one now Bar not, not for Carter Woods Carter Woods actually he's, looks like he's coming back to the leaders on his own so Dario Lilo is he who he is he was with him but now he dropped back a little bit, so he lost a little bit more time. I don't think there's much left of that A-line, you know. I think there's no, you're rolling no. the dice a wee bit for very minimal gains. And if you have been uh, watching, are these guys still doing it? Uh, Lilo does it, Tobias Lilleland does it. Yeah, they're all Martin through it as well. I think you're talking about very small gains. Though. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, but it comes down to one small gains uh, yeah, these fair days. Point. <laughs> that is a fair especially, point, Mark. Especially when it comes down to the final laps, and the riders are still that close together. Then yeah, they will take every risk and every shortcut what's possible. What's going on with Lilo here, Bart? He's further back than we're used to seeing him in this race. Yeah, not his best day today. 
We are at the end of, for a lot of these riders, a six-week block of racing, though, aren't we? It's they even the, the, the Swiss riders, they had their national championships. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you know, for them. And the French riders, actually, they have their national championships next week. And for the young guys, uh, the European championships are on the same day. He has a flat tire, sure. I yeah, think. Flat. Well, just as I said, Riley Amos. Riley Amos, I think, a rear flat. Rear flat here. That Pirelli going flat on him. Yeah, yeah. Just shouting That's over the team. That's a shame. Still a long way for him before he entering that uh, tech zone. Probably has a insert in it so he can ride his bike for a longer time. So Hugo Martin just jets in the bottle there, getting ready to At take a fresh one in the tech feed zone. But we are going to be treated to a wheel change here by Trek Factory Racing. Rear tire, very soft. Very, very soft, yep. Yeah. And it might be that he burped his tire as well in one of these corners, so that, that he lost some air, but that is not completely flat. You can just separate the, the tire from the rim, which just can let a little bit of air out. It's known as colloquially as a burp. A lot of the cross country racers running a tire insert to, um, as we always say, sort of like if you imagine a pool noodle inside the tire, on the rear tire only. Uh, due to weight, so that is why he has been able to continue to ride on. He's probably on that insert as we speak, but yeah, it's pretty miserable going, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, so easy to damage a wheel. Especially now, also the resistance is so much higher. But he's still on his bike, still riding. He doesn't lose that much uh, time. But at least these two French guys are not waiting at all for him. Eight seconds. No, the team will be ready for him to come in. And Carter Woods will overtake him immediately. Yes, he does. We've seen it as well. Let's see how flat it is, how soft it is. It's oh, not yeah. completely... There, it does look like there's an insert in there. He's not down on the rim. No, it's, it's, it's still a bit of uh, air in it. But it's green. There he is in the black jersey. You just saw him. There he is. Seven days, 35 seconds off. The KTM factory MTV team. Now you really lost a little bit of time. 30 seconds now already. Bjorn, Bjorn Riley then just in shot ahead of Michels, who had that fantastic ride. Yeah, Jan de Michels for uh, Alpecin de Koning. Big, big ride in Leergang for Michels. Teammate from Puck Peterson. Yeah, and um, Sam Gates. Somebody else, what's his name? Matthew Mander. Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> fairly, fairly well known cyclist, Matthew Vanderpool, who we will see racing at the UCI World Championships in Glasgow. Yeah, about uh, six weeks' time doing Tour de France at the moment. It's yeah, nice. busy at the minute with a regional bike race in France, and then he will be heading to Glentress in Scotland to take on the UCI World Championships there. Auto Woods, five, six seconds. Wow. Look at the... Uh, really Amos. Yeah, really Amos with this flat tire. But that just costs you so much energy, Martin. It does, it? yeah, it does. And this is the thing, if you're new to cross-country mountain bike racing... He's he fighting can, hard. He can only get this wheel changed in the tech feed zone right at the end of the lap, so he has to make it the whole way around the track before he can pull in. Get a new wheel. So there's there's one and tech feed zone on this course, and there's one tech zone only. So in that first loop, there's a, a tech zone only, and in, uh, yeah, in the second loop, just before the finish line, that uh, section over there, that's a tech feed. And changing, changing wheels is something these top teams will have practiced a lot of because he's some of the best in the world get it down to 12, 14 seconds lost. But it can also be a nightmare. You've got to, yeah, especially there's a whole process, you've got to get the bike in the right gear. These Rear tyre, a, a rear wheel, it costs a little bit more time. You have your, your chain, the disc of your uh, brakes. It's more difficult. Yeah, it's tough. And the true whole, axle as well. Eh? There's a whole process, you've got to come in in the right gear. As Bart says, there's a, a through axle that needs to be taken out with a tool. The, the rear mech itself has a clutch mechanism on to stop it banging around and skipping gears, so you've got to disengage that, and then you've got to put it all back together again. And it's one of those things, as I say, they will practice, but it's a lot easier said than done. You have to be a bit lucky, too. Luck, the luck plays a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Carter Woods, back to the leaders. He's taking his time. 
Well, here drink. we go then. In the tech feed zone, Carter Woods in third place at the minute in the Canadian National Champs jersey, having a good time here in Italy. Behind two fast Frenchmen as we wait. They're all taking their drinks, they're all taking their water, their ice water to cool down. Here comes Riley Amos, is in for that wheel change and does the right thing, steps away from the bike, takes a drink. Track factory racing. Yeah, one of the biggest outfits in the business. Let's see how quickly they can get him back out again. That's the old one out. New one in. In the right gear. Just trying to find, just trying to locate that rear axle. Pressured stuff, this for the mechanic. Disengages the clutch mechanism. Axle in. Gets it in the right gear, Amos is back out again. Not a bad stop, Bart. No, not a bad st stop at all. It's just keeping the mechanic calm, was very it? calm. Yeah, it's keeping calm's a big yeah. one. We saw that, that's the most. We saw Ronja Blertlinger have an absolute nightmare earlier on the season in Lenzerheide, was it, whenever she came in with a similar problem and she missed the she missed the pit box and then yeah, he lost more than uh, 30 seconds in that uh, yeah. tech zone. And then yeah, the mechanic 46 had getting back the, now for really Amos 13th place. He is mechanic had problems getting the axle back in for Blertlinger back then, but that was good for Trek Factory racing. But as Bart says, 30 seconds head down the road. Carter Woods is at the front of this one. In third spot now for Giant Factory Racing. But you can see how mercilessly fast the pace of Hugo Martin is at the front. Luca Martin, excuse me. Boashi is with him in that Technicolor Trinity kit. Strong wide for Carter Woods to come back to the leaders. Washi on a, a plain black specialized bike. Normally we see the Trinity Racing team on the multicolored sort of bright pink bikes. I True. wonder yep. if maybe he's broken one of the custom painted ones or. Okay, like here is uh, Alex Malakan, also a Trinity team. Uh, he has that full colored bike. Yeah. So there is Riley Amos now working his way. 48 seconds back, having been right at the front and then getting that rear flat. Yeah, it's getting more difficult for him, especially now he's caught up by uh, some other riders, so he will find uh, continuing with that rhythm of them. It's not easy at all to do his own race and overtaking riders all the time. So now he's into, uh, yeah, in between uh, many of other riders. Alex Malakani, he's in front of him, the other Trinity rider. Sometimes Obarta can just inspire a bit of anger. Yeah, she a can bit of energy. Yeah, like a Pac-Man. Yeah, like Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how they call it, that Pac-Man racing. Yeah, <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble. He's way on his way to the front. Martin, Boishi, Woods are your top three. Riley Amos with that rear puncture was right with him. Let's see if he can, as Bart says, do the Pac-Man. But this is interesting, these three, they go fast. No problems at all for these three on a course like this here in Valdisol, which is a very technical course, a very demanding course, a lot of climbing involved, technical parts. Also, you need to have the power on that second loop. Different lines, Carter Woods. Carter Woods is then with these two, though. Martin looks strong today. Yeah, he looks strong today, yeah. He does. Pushing uh, a lot of effort into this race. And on each climb again. Pushing, uh, pushing the hammer down. So another Frenchman, Mathis Gouet. Yeah, Mathis Gouet, yeah. yeah. Now in four, 30 seconds back. KTM Factory uh, mountain bike team, he's riding. Strong ride, he is on fourth place. On Let's see where he is. Here. He's at a number three, now we are waiting for the fourth rider. He on that technical part. Really strong for there, Martin. Oh, he knows that he's strong on these sections. You need to go all the way up to the left-hand side there. Oscar yep. Size, the technical coach for Giant Factory Off-Road, just lurking in the undergrowth there, keeping a good eye on his team rider, who's currently in third. Oscar, very, very successful racer himself. Oscar Size. You see him scampering up the side of the track there. Letting Carter know what's going on. You can see the radio in his hand. These top teams will have spotters all around the course, letting their athletes know 
the time gaps and how things are looking behind them. And even sometimes during the race, uh, lines are changing as well. Uh, so, yeah, what, what's a good line in the beginning of the race might be uh, there might come some quicker lines. Jente Michels, here he is. Jente Michels, yeah. Neither of these lines particularly pleasant through here. Yes, Vitona from Italy. Vitona, we saw him look very, very strong at the front of races early in the year. He'd dearly love to get to the front of this one in front of his home crowd, but Martin now. That looks to be a gap behind him. Yeah, Washi. it shows how fast he is in that descent. So there's uh, you know, some work to do here for these guys. Yeah, Washi. And it costs all the time some extra energy. It's just all about burning matches. Yeah, it's Adrian Brosi now. He has to push a little bit harder. And it was uh, yeah, Luca Marte who, who opened the gap actually easily in that descent. Well, easily, it's, it's not an easy job at no, all. Well, everything's easy. relative, isn't it? Relative. <laughs> yeah. It's great. On the fourth place. That's the second tech zone then, yeah. but no feeder bottles there, just technical so support. So Lille Lund, he's on fifth. And we have Dario Lilo now on sixth place. Jante Michiels in seventh. Jordan Reilly is there and the US champ. And here is that gap at the front then. Paul Schell, the German rider. Look at Martin. Ninth place. You can see the teeth gritting at the minute, Bart. Yeah, but he does that all the time here on this climb. Pushing really hard. He's feeling strong. Eight, sec eight seconds. This is the strongest we've seen Carter Woods look in an Olympic race. A longer distance this season, both of them taking the B line there. Yeah, they know as well. The A line, it's possible to do, but it's also a little bit of a risk. And it goes wrong. It does it can go wrong down there as Washi found out to his peril? Lap two, and also especially because you are reaching your highest heart rate on the highest point of the course after yep. that big climb, and then you have to. To make that technical section over there, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. No, it is. You can do it if you are uh, fresh, but yeah. if you are exhausted, it's getting more, more difficult. It is one of the things that I think a lot of people, if they're new to cross country racing, will will struggle to grasp just how difficult these courses are to ride and how difficult decisions are to make whenever your heart rate is at the height that these guys are. It's bike riding suddenly becomes quite difficult, like you know, little descents that you'd normally tip into without too much thought processed all the information around you becomes tough so eight seconds then is the lead of Martin but this way yeah, 40, we know we are 43 further. seconds back and forth it means uh, he's pushing hard look at Marte and it could be a factory team now you can see that gap on your screens that's what it looks like it's not that big it's not that big, but it's not small either. No, but you have to close it first. He's pushing hard all the time. You can see the expression on his face. Adrian Brasi with Carter Woods. Woods looks happy to let Boishi yep. do the work here. Do the work here, yeah. That's how it is. And you can save some energy here on sections like this if you sit uh, just behind someone. And you can save a little bit for the next climb. Also a little bit of time to, to drink, to recover, and then the climb starts. If you are pushing too hard on the flat, you will feel it immediately when the climb starts, and then the, the rider behind you will overtake you immediately. Yeah, it's a tough, tough sport, and as we always say, it's very, very hard to make time in cross-country mountain bike racing. Really, Amos now in 12th place. Going well, Amos. One minute ten now, back off the leader, Martin. With Mario Beer in front of him. That's not a bad combo, those two should be able to work together both yeah. on tracks. Mario Beer, a very strong climber from Austria. Mario Beer on the Trek Future Racing setup as well. Yeah, so the satellite team really of... Uh, yeah, and Tobias Lilleland, he's on sixth place, his teammate from... Uh, Trek Future Racing. Riley Amos' uh, Trek Factory Racing setup, so they should be able to work together as a team. Winch their way back 
on to the leaders. Carter Woods is leading now. Carter Woods, having just, having us just said that, has obviously heard us and got past Boishi. Show us that he is going to have a dig at the front of it. Luca Martano flying up that climb. Oh, he does. Actually, it, this is a climb, and, and see how fast they are going here on this part. I think the word has maybe got through to these two that they need to start reeling the Frenchman back in. Carter Woods and Rayleigh Amos. This is the number four. This is Gui, number 20 on his bike. Having a great ride, Gui. Yeah, yeah. And also, the Jason Group. Look at them. You can see the, the red and white jersey and third wheel here in the blue shorts and the number one bike of Dario Lilo. Yeah, Paul Schell here, the German rider. Tenth place. Lilo led the points race in that jersey. Really Amos also, he's coming back with Mario Bear in front of him to that chasing group. That's he's showing, getting big and chasing showing group. Big, big heart, Riley Amos here on the number 14. After that flat tire, working his way back through. Seconds, it still is. Washi and Woods trying to find an answer for a problem like Luca Martin. Yeah, it's difficult. There is Martin. Boy, he's pushing so hard. He is, isn't he? Yeah. Touch of, the, touch of the Nino shirters and lens are hiding here. He's just seems to be yeah, yeah. attacking everywhere. He's attacking the course. I think he loves these descents, these technical descents, these rock gardens, flying into these. They really are. If you're used to riding a, a trail bike or an enduro style of mountain bike, descending on these cross country bikes, a completely different experience. The bars are so low, the tire pressures are low, the tires themselves are so relatively uh, untreaded, and little suspension and tiny brakes. And it really is an art form. Raji chasing hard. Yeah, Woods just gapping Washi slightly on that descent, so Washi will get back to him now on the flat, the bottom of this valley. Val de Sole Trentino, an absolute classic in terms of mountain bike racing venues. Been coming here since 2008. The 15th year. 15th year. There is somebody dressed like a big apple wandering about outside our commentary booth. I think that apple's been here for 15 years as well. But yeah, this, this valley over here is famous about the apples. Love, they love apples right here, they really do. Look at Martin's been in the tech feed zone. Out uh, he comes. For a drink, for some hydration. Maybe an apple. Probably not. <laughs> apple, <laughs> apple juice. Apple, maybe an apple gel of some kind, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's going to unleash the awesome <laughs> part of apples. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest to eat an apple in a race. It would, be a, it would be a serious statement to your competitors if you thought you had time to, to have an apple. <laughs> Just in the yeah. back of the jersey, maybe. Yeah. Halfway up the climb. 20 seconds. It's getting bigger. It is Looking getting bigger, good for him, it? for Luca Mathieu. But still, two laps to go, so it's still up. Yeah, we always say it. It's so easy to lose time across country. Look at this chasing group. Tell you what, there eight, could, there eight could be eight fireworks. Together. There could be fireworks from this group. Oh yeah. Cool. Under 23 men's cross country. There's Fitone, the Italian so rider in this group. Uh, you're Lilo in this group. James Mikkels decides he doesn't need to head in. Especially in these conditions, I would suggest to take a drink every lap. He doesn't. Also, already Amos doesn't. This flat tire yet earlier in this race. Now coming to the front, the track factory riding. Amos riding back through the group superbly. Riley Amos haven't suffered that flat tire and he kicks on, doesn't fancy hanging around. And that's the problem, Bart. You get in one of those big groups, they can actually slow each other down by racing each other, and he might want to just break free and keep moving forward. Yeah, they're slowing down each other a little bit. Uh, that, that's true. They know probably as well, uh, yeah, a win is not possible anymore. That's more uh, looking good for this guy, Luca Marte. Not looking back, Martin at all, just no. cracking on for Orbea. This course is so demanding, as you can see here as well. It goes up and down all the time. So much corners, there are rocks involved, loose 
corners as he is right now. It's hard to find a good rhythm on this course. It really is, and it is partly to do with that really choppy surface, isn't it? It's just undulating, rocks, roots, it never settles for you. Yeah, it's very bumpy as well all the time. Even on that start-finish trade on the grass, it's not a smooth surface at all. Carter Woods. The numbers two and three in the race with the numbers two and three on their back. Yep, Woods, just uh, fit them in the back of the jersey, maybe a, a gel or an apple or something in there he's after. <laughs> Another <an> apple. <laughs> <laughs> Matthias Quay now, having a really, really strong ride in fourth place, the Frenchman. Yeah, it's almost a minute for him. And here comes the Italian. Yeah, Andreas Vittone. Vittone, and Amos now. John Reilly, in that group two, and Agnette Michielsen, the Belgian rider. Yeah, really Amos, he has been on the third place before really? he had that flat tyre. Really Amos, this is the sort of a ride that a team loves, isn't it? You see somebody really fighting and giving them all, giving their all, can really just up the feeling in a team regardless of what the result is. It is, that's how it is. Look at Martino, still attacking, really. Yeah, 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 he's really pushing hard all the time. This will be Orbea's first win of the season. And well deserved as well, really professional outfit. And there is the gap back to Boashi then. Still in front of Carter Woods. Yeah, coming back again. One second. Batoni is the split time. Batoni is the highest placed Italian in fifth. Yeah, it's looking good for Andreas Batoni. There goes Boashi. See how dusty it is, how loose. Also, very soft rear tire for Carter Wood. So, yeah, not much air in there. We have a little bit more like suspension in his bike. Down through this really chattery rock section. That rock at the yep. top of your screen has been rolling around. <laughs> it's still there. Since the start of the race, not the only 23 women. Loose. Looking for whoever's going to dislodge it first today. But you're busy on the whole lap here, aren't you? You're really just having to choose a line the whole time. There's no asphalt section. There's no no. There's no time to relax on this course. Goes up and down all the time. And also these riders, they can see each other on many places of this on this course. It will help them to motivate themselves. Or they'll. Uh, can be also the opposite. Or oh, it could be the opposite, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a problem getting bigger. with it. But numbers two and three in the race. Adrian, Brasi and Carter Woods. Working hard here in this part of the course. And then it goes down again, up again and down again. They're working hard, Bart, but they're still 19 seconds yeah, behind this man. It stays like more of the same. Yeah, sort of it's been fluctuating between 20, 21, 22, down to 19 now. We saw in the previous lap it was on this part of the course where Luca Matteo ran away. Yeah, a little bit of a gap, especially in the descent, he's very strong. But this Gui, he feels the pressure from uh, the, uh, Pitone in the back. He's coming closer to him, that's for the fourth place. Andreas Pitone, he's, here he is, fifth place, the Italian rider. And then really Amos on six now. Amos. Was up in third position before that rear puncture and tire change, wheel change, excuse me, cost him. Yeah, well, the was two and three in the race. That big climb, <laughs> steep climb. As I say, in 26 seconds, our time and screen in the booth split behind this man. So he's still attacking and it's still working. Cries of Ale Luca from the side of the track. He tips into the B line on this descent, keeps it safe. And also, that B line is becoming very loose. Yeah. And the B line's crumbling now as well. I think that A line's done really. I don't think it's much use to anyone, but through the tunnel now, my friend. The drone also. The drone. The drone through the tunnel. 
I think the drone's on the A line as well down there, on the B line, excuse me, as he just sets up high in that corner to generate a little bit of speed, and he'll carve around that right-hander, little pop off that rock, and then into the left-hander. Marta, great descender, just standing in the middle of the bike. Carter Woods takes the A line note and yep, uses it to distance yep. himself slightly from Adrian Boisci. That's the difference in uh, taking an A line and the B line. Four seconds. I'm wondering if he's able to close that gap to Luca Marte. These guys are. Pushing hard. Look quite hard, Riley Amos and Jens Mikkels yep. are working. But this Grease still in front of him. They're taking the B line. Oh, oh. Bjorn Riley drops yeah. into the A line yeah. and blows oh. that corner away. Oh. That might A be the last dust. turn. But he's saved. Yeah, he saved that as well. That was pretty aggressive stuff from Bjorn Riley, but got away with it. Yeah. See a replay of that actually. Some information being relayed to Luca Martin there. You would have to imagine that information is keep going. Time for a drink. He has to. He has to take his time for that. Carter Woods 25 seconds ahead then. 25 seconds behind, sorry, Luca Martin. So all those attacks, they're adding up. What about Adrian Boisci? Where he is? Where is Boisci? Yeah, yeah, he's still in third in our time in screens. Four seconds back off Woods. We yeah, haven't seen him for a while. There he is. Yeah, still together. Yeah, we knew what this replay was going to be. Bjorn Riley. Really? Whoa. Detonating a corner. He's saved. Look at right. the dust part, look how it hangs in here in Val de Sole, it's so dry. It is, what a nice shot. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, the kills the last rider of that group, looking back over his shoulder. Group of five, chasing hard, but he's squeezing, he's in it. Joran Reilly, Reilly Amos. But this man is leading the race, and he make it to a good end. Carter Woods doing the work at the top of this climb ahead of Adrian Boisci. Yeah, they still will see each other on some of the, some of the part of the course. And they will know the distance. Wondering how much it is. I think the race is still not over yet. I, yeah, I still think there's a sting in the tail for this one. Just trying to look at our timing screens. Lilo's in 11th now, so the overall points leader. Low Boisci will not be where he wants to be, which will be at the very front of the race. He is going to pull some useful points over Dario Lillo, the way it stands in the overall competition at the minute. 23 seconds back for Carter Woods and Adrian Boisci. Yeah, a minute back. That chasing group. Really Amos. Really Amos now. Really has been electric today here in Val di Sole Trentino. Shame for him that he had a flat tyre. Yeah, he could have, been, could have been a contender today, you feel, right, yeah, Amos? Yeah, 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 he was. Paul Schell, next rear rider, here he is. The German champion with the number 30 on his bike. And here is Dario Lilo. There is the points the number leader one. then, on the number one in the points leader's jersey, but... Yeah, he lost a lot of points. He lost if a lot it, of points if over... It stay like this. If it stays like this, and Adrian Boisci can maybe get past Carter Woods and into second, I'd say Boisci will take that for a good day. Absolutely no catching Luca Martin today. What a ride for him. Pushing a big gear as well. Yeah, he does, it? yes. He's strong, he's powerful, strong in the descents, flying into these descents, all attacking the course. All these top under 23 men, but they're all big units now as well, aren't they? Yeah, it looks like that you what? need to be powerful uh, 
especially on the cross country courses these days. Of course, also the bikes actually they they became a little bit more heavier because that most of them have more more travel, more suspension, uh, bigger tires, more volume. That's also because the courses are getting more technical. They're stiffer as well than they used to be, and they've had to put more material into the carbon fiber layups because the demands of what these top riders are asking of them they can't be as as skinny as they used to be. No, it's, that, that's how it is. So, uh, yeah, most of the bikes there are around 11 kilos. Uh, not, 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 yeah, especially not a full suspension bike with 120 millimeter suspension. To have a bike lower than 10, it's almost impossible. Also, yeah. they're, they're running a dropper seat posts, uh, uh, power meter cranks, all that kind of stuff on your bike at all adds a little bit of weight. But it means also that you need to be a, a little bit more powerful. Yeah, Riley almost pops the cheeks out, drops the saddle, heads into this descent. Final lap then for this man, Luca Martin. In a mission, but he's suffering. Not an easy ride for Luca Martin, but he's leading. Well, Carter Woods actually leads the fastest lap time at the minute with a 12.35. Then it's Boishy, then Martin. Then Riley Amos, who else? Washi getting a drink. Here they come, the numbers two and three in the race. Back over his shoulder, for Carter Woods. 29 seconds back, these two. Yeah. Looking around. Yeah. Who's your money on between the two of them, Bart? This, this group between Boishi and Woods. Ah, Boishi, God, Woods. Well, Boishi normally very strong when it comes down to a last lap in uh, short track racing. I think he doesn't have his best day today. Uh, Woods, he came back. It would be really useful if Boishi could get Boishi, second place yeah, in terms of points. I think uh, I, I go for Boishi. Okay, we'll see how that one pans out. But also this uh, chasing group, it's interesting to see. Uh, you feel that somebody will have to attack in this group. But Mario Bea now, who's taking lead, really aims, of course. He, is, he, he must be feeling strong because he was in the top three of this race before he had that flat tire. So he might be in for uh, the best result of that group. And that's a, that means a fourth place in the race. And also the Italian rider. Andreas Pitone. Here we go then. He will push hard. Carter Woods out in the saddle, working away behind Adrian Boishy now. These two. It's been a cagey affair all race long. Not really lump, knocking lumps out of each other, but they might well start to now. Carter Woods would fancy making this a 1-2 between the short track and the cross-country Olympic. Yeah. Could be. Still looking good. And they're using every second to stretch their legs to recover. Look He's at the faces here. Yeah, Mario Beer. The gentle Michiel next to him. There's the Tony here, the KTM. Tony with the jersey open. Business time. Yeah, Mario Beer. Bear the Austrian. Actually, I was I was out for a ride this morning, and, and around I think it was, was uh, seven thirty something like that. Mario Bear, he was already out for a warm up. Really? That early? That early? I was really surprised. To well, see him that early already doing his warm up. He's, you've obviously inspired something in him, Bart, because he's making a good fist of the last half of this race. He's doing. On the final lap, it is thirty nine seconds now. The gap between Luca Martin and Carter Woods, but. Big battle is going to come between Woods, Washi, and then that group behind them to find out who can grab fourth place. Yeah, that JC group. Dario Lelo, your overall points leader, is down in 11th at the minute. Yeah, yeah. 127 he will, back. He will lose a lot of points if it stays like that. Luca Martano has attacked every inch of this track here in Val di Sole Trentino. You see every race, every week again, yeah, different riders in front of uh, these races. No guarantee for a good race. You have to work hard all the time. Carter Woods. 
He has just attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's attacked Guashi, and it looks like it might be sticking for the big Canadian. If you're talking about a one-two. Yep, he won the short track. The man who's just left your shot earlier in the weekend, Adrian Boishy. Winner last time out, had a great time in Lea Gang, but it's not adding up for him this evening. This afternoon, sorry. They're at it. The chasing group at Mario Beer. This is your leader. Look at up there. Be a factory team. Absolutely scintillating today. Lined himself up for a big second half of the year. 28 seconds for Ricardo Woods. What we said, didn't we, Bart, at the start of this, whenever they took to the start line, that we maybe hadn't seen the best of him yet this season. We're certainly seeing it today. Yeah, it is. It is. He shows his strength, the French champion. And also, I mean, uh, this, this is the last race of the first half of the season. The second half of the season has, even, has so much to come. Yeah, lots of flyaway races in the second half as well, where fatigue and... Yep, a good planning for these riders, for... it's so important. Good plan of the season, and also to take good rest sometimes as well. Yep. Well, plenty more racing coming up today, the elite women and the elite men, but we're getting down to the sharp end list when the only 23 race for the men. And so Luca Martin, who's been the class of the field, but we're now seeing Carter Woods, a Canadian. Set about Adrian Boishy, the Frenchman, and he's put 23 seconds into him. And just support for him here on the sides. And that motivates him. You can see it. There he goes. Start to the finish, he's pushing so hard. He has winched it on all day, Luca Martin. He's not slowing down now. Not at all, no. Look at the gear he's pushing up here, Bart. I mean, there's, there's a bit of time for him to uh, play with. Yep. Picks up Beeline. Absolutely pushing hard all the time. Not looking back. Why would you? Carter Woods, 24 seconds up the road. Washi, 44 seconds behind him. Mario Bear, 1 minute 12 back. Jente Mikkel, 1.15 back. Yeah, Jente Mikkel's already had a good race in uh, Leocon, the last race. And now even better, fifth place. Really, Amos not that far off, the second of him for the fifth place. Paul Schell, the young German rider. Yes, we're going in the first Italian rider on the ninth place. Drop the seat goes down, oh, two outs. Oh. <laughs> Taking still a lot of risks in these corners. There it goes, my town. Not slowing down for a no. second. I was wondering actually if there was something wrong with his rear tire, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Because he was had it, he had his foot out. Why should he have? It? Let's have a look. Ah, oh, it's still not. Please. No. Maybe. Oh. Uh, so maybe just got a bit soft with these burps in there somewhere out of it. Oh. No, something else is wrong or not? There's oh. an issue here by yeah, the look of it. It is an issue. With yeah, front, front flat. Front flat. Front flat. A front flat for the race leader then, Luca Martin. Ah, that's even worse. Drama at the end of this one. Drama. Opportunity and the rear. Carter. The rear looks pretty soft as well, Bart. But why taking so much risks if you have a lead of 30 seconds in a descent? And Carter Woods then, Carter there he is in shot. He will see the Frenchman coming back into shot. He can now. go in for Look a double. Look at Carter Woods go. Yeah, yeah, he can go in for a double. Carter Woods smells a double on the cards here, and this he is what we are talking about. last Thursday. This is what ah. we are talking about. It's so easy to lose time across country mountain bike racing. And Carter Woods what? moves into the lead of this under-23 men's World Cup cross-country Olympic Drama race. Drama for Luca Martin. 
here. Oh, such bitter. What a bitter pill to swallow for Luca Martin. He's been scintillating throughout this whole race, but as Bart said, he just wouldn't stop taking risks. And I know what it's like when you're riding well, you think you've got this, but my goodness, he will regret that. Luca Martin left to limp home. Adrian Brasi also, we will overtake him easily. I think it's both tires, you know. He's off and running here. Yeah, but a, a front flat, actually, that's the worst what you can have, because, yeah, you can't, you can't control steer, your you bike, can't control the bike. No, but also, rear, rear looks also very soft. I wonder if he's clipped the same rock. He's, he's tapped both tires, and maybe yeah. they've both gone yeah. at once. Could be. And also, maybe, <laughs> I mean, uh, that chasing group with uh, Rayleigh Amos, uh, Jante Michiels, Mario Beer, they are not that far off. It was like a 50 seconds, so... Uh, at, at there's Adrian Bashi is about to pick up a nice fat handful of points in the overall ahead of Dario Lilo as Adrian Bashi now goes past Luca Martin. Oh, drama for. Oh, oh such, such disappointment for Luca Martin after all he's given today. Well, this is mountain bike racing. It's a mountain yeah, but that's sport. Also racing, huh? you have to. Yeah. You have to control yourself too, huh? It, yeah, it's yeah. Can Riley Amos ride his way to a podium? And yeah, look, both tires flat, Bart. Oh. Yeah, also that rear. It's very, that I think rear is on the insert, yeah, I that's think. An insert, yes. yes. So a lot of cross country riders not riding an insert in the front wheel, which is maybe why it looks flatter than the rear. I think he hit, he hit one of the rocks in that descent with, with both wheels. Yeah, must have done. Uh, yeah. Timmy tap two of them. Mario Beer, Jente Michiels, and then we have Paul Schell, the German rider. Where is Rayleigh Amos? He is not that far up the road oh, behind. There he is. But, uh, yeah, he's on fourth place. But, uh, yeah, he will overtake uh, Luca Marti. I think he will. Carter Woods, though, can start to dream. He just needs to keep plugging away for the rest of this lap. Well, it's mountain bike racing that happens in the mountains and anything can happen in the mountains as we know and that is just how fickle a so sport this can be. Luca Martin after pouring himself into this race for five long laps. So really able he's able to make it to the podium if, uh, with a flat tire earlier into the race. Yep, just now, goes to show. Uh, place. Goes to show you've got to keep the faith and keep working. But this is your leader suddenly Carter Woods from Canada. Carter Woods won't believe this. Look, he shakes the head at the top of the climb. Now, he needs to be careful on this descent. And he will. He knows. Bart, it must be it's difficult whenever you're in a groove and you're riding well, but you think Luca Martin just took too many I mean, chances? I mean, he was, the way he was, he was riding on that climb, so aggressive, it means also he's like more, even more aggressive in the descent. And you know what mountain biking is. There are rocks everywhere, you have to stay they have to stay calm in control. And he didn't do it. Well, what a sport this is. How cruel cross-country racing can be. That's Rayleigh Amos on third place. Rayleigh Amos is in third place. Well, Yenta Michiels. Yenta Michiels is not that far off for, the, for a podium spot. No, nope. he'll smell blood. The Belgian. Rayleigh Amos now. What a result this would be. A fairy tale ride if he could get third place. Well, Yenta Michiels is very close to him. Then we have Mario Beer from Austria. Luke Wittmann, not seen much of today. This is your leader. He's coming into the last corner to the finish line. Here he comes in. Carter Woods, the big man from Canada. The Canadian. He is about to do the double in Val de Sole Trentino. Carter Woods pulls the jersey down, sits up for the first time in over an hour. Carter Woods takes the win in Val de Sole Trentino after taking the short track win earlier on this weekend as well. What a result for Giant Factory Off-Road and the big Canadian. He can't believe it either. Adrian Boisci, not his finest day, but he'll be more than happy with second place and a massive hat full of points over Dario Lilo in the overall. Now the fight for the third place after Adrian Brasi, who is finishing second. Here we second. go, I think Riley Amos has done enough, you know, I think he's managed to, to gap the wrestling. Amos sprinting for the line, Yinta McHales comes round the corner in fourth place. Amos sticks the tongue out, celebrates. That one took effort, McHales sprints for the line then. Yinta McHales in fourth place. Great result for him. Mario Bear. 
Luc Wittman. Stop the clock in second place. Rochelle, the young German rider, in seventh place. Rochelle in seventh place. Strong right. Tisquee, eight. Tisquee will have hooked the board day after that really strong start. Oh, he lost so much places. Here he comes. Look at Mate. Oh, what a shame. Look at Mate. Left across the line. Eleventh place. Oh, Luca Marte, he almost won the race before he had that flat. He was leading. What a better, better test appointment for Luca Marte. And there is a overall no points place. leader, home in 12th place. A rare off day for him, a pop of the cheeks. Yeah, he lost a lot of points. He will be looking straight up to that board to see where Adrian Boashi came home. And he'd be disappointed to see 10 spots up the road from himself. Luca Marte, oh, look at him. I cannot believe it. Vittone straight over to him to commiserate as well, but... Watch this for a reaction. Yep. It's a tough sport. It is. It's a tough, tough sport. Luca Martin, you have to feel for him. Bart. Yeah, really sad to see that. But you have to stay in control also if it comes down to the last lap. If you have a lead, why not take it a little bit more precisely, more carefully? Roll off a bit. Yeah, it was time enough easy for, for him to, to play with. It's easy for us to say in the comments yeah, booth, but true. he attacked for so long that you just felt the fish was in the boat. and he Yeah, could... yeah, <laughs> he almost got it. In, Bart, the, in one of the last descents, huh? I mean, yeah. Carter Woods then from Adrian Boishy, from Riley Amos, Jente Michaels in fourth, Mario Bear in fifth. I'm joined by Carter Woods. Now, Carter, what a weekend. What a weekend. A day after Canada Day, a day after Jackson Goldstone's victory in downhill. I mean, it's a weekend for the Canadians. Uh, you did the double. Yeah. How do you feel? I know, it's pretty crazy. Uh, that last lap, a lot of things happened. I, I was on the hunt for first and then as I was cross-eyed trying to catch up, I heard like mechanical in the front and I just started like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So, um, no, I mean, I'm super excited, but uh, yeah, bummer for Luca. But um, yeah, that's, that's racing at the end of the day. It was a real dramatic race. You know, tell us about that battle that you had with Adrien Boachiche uh, just before then. Yeah, I mean, I had a terrible start. Uh, I was off running at the start and then I worked my way back up and Luca attacked sort of right when I got got onto the lead group and then I sort of took a few laps to see what was happening and then yeah last lap I attacked uh, and yeah crazy well well congratulations and well done for the double thank you <laughs> Gar Woods in <laughs> celebrates Canada yeah, Canada on top Canada day yesterday some day they had in the downhill as well. Well, let's see how the race unfolded then. Fast start as we predicted. Luca Martin, the national champions jersey of France, led the way. There was chaos behind them deep in the pack. Yeah, he was leading into the first uh, corner. Yeah, 120 then, riders taking a start here. It was Tom Skellikis who was leading for the first lap most of the time. As you can see here how hard this course here in Val de Sol is. And Luca Marte actually didn't wait that long before he took the lead. And he puts a lot of effort into this race. Small gap immediately after the first descent. And he was very strong and aggressive into the descents all the time. Adrian Brochy, he was with him. But she was at the front of it throughout. Yeah, and also Rayleigh really Amos, he was uh, with them uh, after that. Carter Woods fought his way back to the front then. And we had a leading group of three. Through this brutal rock section that may just have been 
The race to side O'Reilly Amos suffered a puncture early on. Yeah, a rear flat he had. He made some the time. And after that, Luca Martin, he put the hammer down. It wasn't uh, Adrian Brachy and uh, Carter was actually who couldn't follow him. They were fighting for the second place when it came down to the last lap. Last lap then. These are the numbers two and three. The chase compared to Carter left. Carter Woods, he went away from Adrian Brachy. And, and then, then suddenly. Suddenly the race turned on its head. Luca Martin was in big, big trouble with a double flat. Picked up on one of those descents. Carter Woods stormed past him, didn't have to think twice. And then suddenly he was leading the race in the last loop. Luca Martin showing just what a cruel sport cross country racing can be. He was soon back into the clutches of Riley. Amos as well. Martin oh, so throwing, overtook him. throwing everything out of him. Just not being rewarded today. Boishi was second ahead of Amos. But it was Carter Woods who was left with the biggest smile in Trentino doing the double. Riley Amos kept the faith to hang in there for third. Jinta Mikkels was in fourth. Carter Woods celebrating yesterday's Canada Day in some style. Let's have a look at the results after we see this reaction from Luca Martin, who was just devastated, understandably so. Very disappointed he was. There we have it then. Carter Woods from Adrian Boishy, Riley Amos, Michels, Bear, Vidman, Shell, Gui, Tony and Riley. Then it was the man who led for much of it. Martin, Dario Lilo, the overall leader in 12th. Trudler, Leland, Bauman, Malacarney in 16th. Schellikens back in 17th. Van Dijk, Rechtal. Matt Wilson there from New Zealand in 30th. Zat Lukel, 33rd for the Czech Republic. Well, let's hear from Adrian Boishy now then. Adrian, a fantastic weekend for you. Two podiums in short track and today in cross-country Olympic. Uh, a very tough race out there today, but you finished second. Maybe take us through it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's been... After Thursday, I was quite disappointed with myself because I had good legs and I could have done a better race up with the legs I had, but today I'm just super happy with what I did. I, fr I fought from start to finish. I think I optimized my race as good as I could. And there were just a few guys stronger than me. I actually look at punctured, so I could get for second. But yeah, I'm really happy with what I did today, actually. And I don't think I could have done anything better. Tell us about line choice, maybe, because you made a tiny error in the first lap. I don't know if you remember going off um, right, taking the right line instead of the left line. Was that costly? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think, because then on the flat I could catch up to Luca. Uh, yeah, I, was, I think it was definitely really dusty and I wanted to try the inside and I think I was just a bit too much on the limit to do it, so then I just took the beeline after. That's right. Well, congratulations, Adrian. Thank you. Adrian Boishy then. Superb performance from a superb performer and he will have helped himself to a nice dollop of points as well. Superb stuff from Boashi today. Not the win, but given where Lilo finished, a helpful serving of points. Well, plenty more racing to come this afternoon as we get ready to get the elites on course. In an hour's time. Yeah, one o'clock. Just had to run that one past yeah, Barn. It was still a bit scrambled the, from yesterday, but the, the start is at one o'clock. <laughs> So, Riley, congratulations. You finished third here in Val di Soli. It was a tough 
race, but you made it onto the podium. Just take us through maybe that final lap and how you managed to get uh, into third place. Yeah, man, I had a, a great start today. Was with the front group early, feeling really, really good. Um, and I had an unfortunate mechanical set me back a little bit, but once I got the wheel changed and caught back on the front of the chase group, I just kind of focused on riding my own race and last lap up the, the climb before the rock drop up top, I knew I knew the A-line is a little bit faster and I hadn't been taking it all race, but I knew if I went into the A-line first, I'd have a small gap from there to the finish. So I sent the A-line, got really lucky that I made it through smooth and just stayed on the gas. And I came up the last section of road and saw Luca with double flat and was able to pass him for the medal right, right before the finish. So super, super happy. My body was amazing today and had a great race start to finish. And one little mechanical maybe helped me for the fight for the win, but third place is my best result this season by far. So super, super happy. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you. Riley Amos in the wars today, but what performance, Mark. Yeah, and he was uh, fighting hard also after his flat tire, of course. Uh, yeah, you have to find your motivation back after that. You have to find your rhythm back, but he did it and he made it to the podium. It's early, of course, in all these young riders' career, but you learn a lot on days like that, don't you, from Riley Amos? It is, it is, yeah. It's, you have to deal with these things, with uh, yeah, these uh, technical problems, a uh, little bit of bad luck, but he managed it to the podium and, uh, and yeah, an excellent performance, actually. There he goes, just getting the all clear to get on the first step of the podium. Yes, you can, Riley. Herb result from Riley Amos then from the USA for Trek Factory Racing. Refused to give up after that flat tire. Rode his way into third place. Adrian Boishy then second place today. He will be after the top step, but given where his big rival for the title, Dario Lilo, finished up, second place. Not a bad effort either. Get ready for this then, Carter Woods for Giant Factory Off-Road Team, the Canadian national champion does the double in Val de Sole Trentino. Won the short track earlier in the weekend and won the cross-country Olympic today. And do you know what, Bart? Luca Martin's bad luck aside, he kept himself in it. He was at the front of the race as well. Yeah, he did that too, a superb race. Carter Woods then takes the win in Val de Sole Trentino. The UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup for the under 23 men. Yeah, that'll do. That'll kill you down on a hot day in Italy. Champagne shower. Champagne charge for the winners. Yep, Carter Woods heads off the podium. Job done. He can head into the summer break. Happy with that. That's that big apple that you've been talking about. That's Melinda. another big apple, yeah. Carter Woods celebrating with Andy Vatnis, the photographer, fellow Canadian. Washi, Lilo, Woods. Only 16 points. 16 points, but Washi, crucially, is now top of the tree at the halfway point of the season in the cross country Olympic pecking order. Carter Woods on third place now. Yeah, great result for Carter Woods. Malacarney in 11th, Blackmore in 12th. Is that Lugal 13th? Trudler, Gui. Bear, Rectal, Punchar, Hudima in 19th. You really have to feel for Luca Montan. Absolutely dominated this race from the earliest of early doors and then 
double flat, halfway around the last lap. Trying to get this man back on stage though. Adrian Boishy, needs to go and collect the jersey. He's been waiting for this one, the overall points leader's jersey then. Goes to Adrian Boishy. For Trinity Racing MTB. One of the big, big talents in cross country racing at the minute, Boishy. Cycling, I think he Cycling, is. Cycling, yeah. The real deal. Boishy happy with that one. Leads the way in the overall points battle then. And poses with the winning bike. Got to get that shot, Mark. It's important. Keeps yeah. everyone happy. Yeah. It's important <laughs> to be proud of your sponsors. Keeps the new equipment coming. Yeah, I'm wondering too why he's not on his uh, Colops Trinity bike. Yeah, maybe just maybe might have broke a crack the frame or something or just done something that. Okay. Yeah, he's going to ride this one off the stage. There you go. <laughs> no problems. <laughs> Youngsters, Bart, you can't teach them anything. There he is, Adrian Brasier, though. Next up, we have the big guns, the women's elite race, the cross country Olympic World Cup. Here from Val de Sole, Trentino. Start time, one o'clock. We'll be on air before that. Don't miss a second off it. If this morning's races are anything to go by, we should be in for an absolute treat. As it continues to get warmer and warmer, the wind is picking up here outside the booth. But we'll take it however way it comes. Thanks for watching all the action from the under 23s this morning. We'll be back with the elites just as soon as we can. See you then.